Václav Havel, Letters to Olga, from letter number 138, July 25th, 1982. It began rather inconspicuously. I was in detention for the first time and one evening, after interrogation, I wrote out a request to the public prosecutor for my release. Prisoners in detention are always writing such requests and I too treated it as something routine and unimportant, more in the nature of mental hygiene. I wrote my request in a way that at the time seemed extremely tactical and cunning, while saying nothing I did not believe or that wasn't true. I simply overlooked the fact that truth lies not only in what is said, but also in who says it and to whom, why, how, under what circumstances it is expressed. Thanks to this minor oversight, more precisely this minor self-deception, what I said came dangerously close, by chance, as it were, to what the authorities wanted to hear. And then one day lightning struck, I was given to know that I would probably be released and that in the process political use would be made of my request. Of course I knew right away what that meant. That with appropriate recasting, additions and widespread publicity, the impression would be created that I had not held out. That I had betrayed my cause. No denial or correction on my part could alter that impression because I had undeniably written something that met them halfway and anything I could add would, quite rightly, seem like an attempt to warm my way out of it. That the approaching catastrophe was unavoidable. That the blot it would leave on me and everything I had taken part in would haunt me for years to come. That I had no one but myself to blame. No one knows what I went through in the darkest period of my life. You may be the only one who has an inkling. There were weeks, months, years in fact, of silent desperation, self-castigation, shame, inner humiliation, reproach and uncomprehending questioning. And in fact, it hasn't been until today that I've been able to rise above the whole affair and assess it more evenly. I've only now begun fully to realize that the experience wasn't just, from my point of view at least, an incomprehensible lapse that caused me a lot of pointless suffering. It had a deeply positive and purgative significance for which I ought to thank my fate instead of cursing it. It is not hard to stand behind one's successes but to accept responsibility for one's failures, to accept them unreservedly as failures that are truly one's own, that is devilishly hard.